pleased to introduce you to Kelly Fowler, Fowler, our Democratic nominee in the 21st House District here in Virginia Beach. Thank, Thank you, you, Kelly. Thank you. Um, good morning. Thanks, everyone, for being here. And um, to thank you to Delegate Martin Simon for coming all the way from North, North, uh, Northern Virginia at this time of day, so happy, I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Thank you. I'm here today to make a promise to you and to all the people of the 21st District in Virginia Beach and in Chesapeake. I pledge that when I'm elected to the House of Delegates, my first action in Richmond will be to become the chief co-sponsor of Delegate Marcus Simon's bill to ban personal use of campaign funds. Because no one should profit from serving in office. My opponent, Ron Villanueva, appears to be using his campaign account as a piggy bank for himself and his business. In 2016, a non-election year for delegates, Villanueva spent a record amount of campaign money on personal expenses. On rent and utilities alone, he spent over $12,000. Let me put that into perspective. About half the delegates had, a, had zero category, about 400, and he spent five times that amount. His newest company, Stratus Corps, shared an address with his campaign office that entire year. This pattern of profiting from public service began several years ago when Villanueva's previous company, SEK Solutions, where he served in executive positions, also shared an address with his campaign office and paid expenses with his campaign account. Villanueva paid $9,500 in rent out of his campaign account to SEK Solutions. You might remember SEK Solutions being identified just last month in a $16 million Department of Justice settlement with ADS Inc. ADS was accused of improperly bidding on contracts that are set aside for small businesses and socially economically disadvantaged. The fact that Villanueva was principal and served as president of a company that allegedly masqueraded as a woman-owned or socially disadvantaged business serious, raises serious questions about his ability to hold a position of public trust. Villanueva also spent an offensive amount of campaign money on office supplies, travel, and meals in 2016. So keep in mind, as I tell you the amounts, that 2016 was a non-election year for delegates. For office supplies, he was the top spender over $14,000. No other delegate spent over 6000 In fact, about 75% of the delegates spent under 1000 In travel and meals, he again takes the number one spot on spending about 14000 again, 900 on 356 different line items. Campaign finance is public record, so I will not go on with the statistics, but he is number one in gas tank fill-ups and total office-related expenses. The people of Hampton Roads know where I stand. I will stand up for transparency and accountability in Virginia politics. Keeping campaign finance in the shadows will only hurt hardworking Virginians. This proposed legislation that Delegate Simon and I will introduce will be a solid first step in ensuring campaign funds aren't wasted and candidates aren't profiting off their campaigns for office. Thank you. And now I'm going to turn it over to Delegate Marcus Simon. Thank you, Thank Kelly. You. Thanks for having me down here. Hey, listen, I am looking forward to having you join me in Richmond and joining me in this effort. It's been uh, something, it's, it takes something new, actually, to sort of start and do something like this. I was uh, the, the, introduced this bill for the first time my freshman year as a delegate, and uh, we, we kept at it for about four or five times. You know, it's, uh, Virginia is one of only three states that have, has not already banned the personal use of campaign funds. Yet when I get down to Richmond and we get in front of these Republican controlled committees, like, I don't know, it's too hard. You know, how are we going to do this? We can't figure it out. Well, 47 other states have managed to figure it out by now. And if there was a will to do it, uh, it would certainly happen. In fact, we got pretty close this year. Um, and in fact, we had a proposal that was getting ready to come out of committee, and one of the members of the Republican leadership said, ah, not so fast. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I like you know, being able to eat these meals wherever I please, not have to worry about answering questions about it. So I, I, we could really use some help. We could use some support. I look forward to working with you on this really important issue because you know, it's really important that people trust the system. 
I think one of the problems we have in politics generally at the state and federal level is people have lost confidence in their leadership and, and believe uh, on a deep level that the system is rigged uh, against them and nobody's really looking out for their interests. And I think that's why we have high rates of, of non-voter turnout and things like that. Uh, and you know, it's not just happening at the House delegates level. We've got this problem at the top of the Republican ticket as well. Uh, we can talk about uh, Lieutenant, the Lieutenant Governor for just a second, Jill Vogel. Uh, you know, Jill describes herself as an ethics attorney. Uh, but what does that mean? Well, it means that she's the person you go to if you've got an ethics problem and you don't want to get in trouble. Right? And that's actually what she said about herself and her firm in the uh, Richmond Times Dispatch on Labor Day. Uh, she said, my, my firm's the one you come to if you absolutely don't want to get in trouble. She came back with a statement a little later, I think some of her partners got to her and said, well, actually, attorney client privilege really doesn't allow me to talk much more about this and what kind of work we actually do. Uh, but yeah, I think in that sort of moment of candor, we found out what really happened. Uh, you know, we have all kinds of lawyers, and, and, and certainly everybody's entitled to a, a defense and a robust defense and, and, and to be represented uh, when they get into trouble. But it's a little bit of a different story where you're planning to get into trouble, and so before you do, you know, you're looking for the lawyer to tell you, you know, how, how to get away with it, right? And that's, that's always been a little bit of a different line. And so, um, you know, she's, her, her firm's clients have included um, all kinds of dark money groups, too. I mean, they specialize in sort of how we avoid transparency. You know, Virginia's got this scheme of, of laws that, that disclose most everything. As Kelly said, you know, we can find Ron's expenses and his contributors online, uh, but we can't find a lot of these 501c4 groups, these dark money groups that have very sort of benign sounding names like <coughs> Americans for <coughs> Transportation Solutions. Well, what does that mean really? Well, we're the group that's against mass transit wants more highway funds, but they don't tell you that. And they can pump all kinds of money into issue ads. Um, and they can even go after candidates specifically uh, on a specific issue and there's no disclosure of who funds those, where those money comes from, uh, and necessarily who's controlling, who's pulling the purse strings on that. And that's the kind of client that, that her firm specializes in representing, including American Crossroads, which is a dark money group that actually was founded by Ed Gillespie and Carl Rowe back in 2010, which brings us to the very top of the Republican ticket. Um, you know, I wrote a letter to Ed um, back in April asking him for <clears throat> three things, basically. One, give us a list of all your, not just lobbying clients, but your consulting clients. Because again, as we learned from uh, Joe Vogel's firm, you know, Sometimes you get the way we get away with it is by calling it something different. We can't call it lobbying. If we call it lobbying, we have to disclose it. If we call it consulting, we'll try and get away with not disclosing it. And after the letter came out, we tried to get some attention for that. You know, I finally fessed up and said he was a consultant <clears throat> for an energy firm that had done a lot of business here in Virginia. Uh, so I asked him, disclose the name of his firm, said, tell us what you're going to do to pr make sure that Virginians can have confidence that the actions you take as governor or on behalf of what's in the best interest of Virginia residents and Virginia Beach residents versus what's in the interest of your corporate clients and your consulting clients and your business partners. You know, they may be your former clients, but you still have business relationships with folks for their current clients of. And then help tell us again how you're going to build a, a wall, right? Where, where's the, what's the barrier going to be? How are we going to prevent these conflicts of interests from happening? I think he owes it to the people of Virginia to explain what his plans are to keep those conflicts of interest uh, from, from coming to fruition and how we avoid the appearance of impropriety. Because uh, even if he's not doing anything wrong, <clears throat> that the lack of disclosure, the, act, you know, the complete lack of transparency that we've seen so far and that unwillingness to, to give up the goods and tell us who he's worked for and where his money's come from, uh, it erodes confidence in the system. Um, and the reason that I've been such an advocate for, for meaningful ethics reforms, uh, for going beyond the gift ban, uh, for going beyond, you know, let's have an ethics commission that's got investigative authority and can, and can investigate and look into uh, issues and then prosecute if we find wrongdoing. Um, you know, the biggest loophole to the ethics, you know, to the gift gap that we've seen is to funnel that money through the campaign accounts. Because I can't buy you dinner, but I can take you to dinner, <clears throat> and I can call it a campaign contribution when I pick up the check. And that's how we get to 235 <clears throat> different meals and expense reports. So um, you know, we, it's time we close those loopholes. You know, the governor of Virginia put it in the state of the Commonwealth Address the last two years. It's been a big initiative. Uh, we haven't made much progress yet, but I think with the help of folks like Kelly Fowler and the rest of the Democratic ticket here in Virginia Beach and Hampton Roads, uh, we get that those numbers better, get the majority back in the House, uh, and we've got Governor Northam and uh, Lieutenant Governor Fairfax and Attorney General Herring uh, in charge of the administration, and I think we can actually make some progress to restore uh, Virginians' confidence in their state and local government and know that the people that are, they've elected to work for them are in fact looking out for their best interests and not 
uh, selling their votes to the highest bidder. All right. Okay.